ecumenically daring to ad address painful ecclesial scars, healing difficult memories such as we did with the Mennonites in 2010 in Stuttgart. With deep gratitude to God, this year we mark 20 years since the signing of the Joint Declaration of the, on the Doctrine of Justification, JDDJ. That is a very significant ecumenical milestone in our journey from conflict to communion. And I am very grateful once again to, for our visit uh, in 2017 already to Pope Francis who reiterated this commitment. Through our global diaconal instrument, the Department for World Service, we have responded to ravaged, to war ravaged regions of the world and devastation brought by natural disasters and human disasters. Sisters and brothers, each of us, each church is a part, but not the whole body of Christ. Indeed, we have come a very long way together. So we cannot afford to be sources of pain for each other. While there will always be differences in our understanding and other reasons for disagreement, let us not cast each other away as we often pray with the psalmist, cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me, Psalm 51, verse 11. In a world where the, it is easy to sever ties and relationships, our unity is a profound witness. Yet our collective voices against all forms of injustice should be stronger and more efficacious. We are also a communion call to hear creation's cry for healing. Amid the many voices, there is another voice that is constantly crying out that's, that must be heard. It is the voice of creation, the earth, that is, according to Romans 8.22, groaning in labor pains. Creation is groaning through environmental degradation. Its impact is catastrophic with devastating cyclones, floods, and droughts. The crisis and this climate emergency calls for dramatic intervention. And as God's servants, we are called to be good stewards of creation. The groaning of creation is the voice of God groaning in pain. We are called not just to honor creation and hear its groaning, but to act in response. We must act alongside our brothers and sisters and church communities because of God's call, because God calls us to be engaged, fruitful human beings on this earth. I am here deeply grateful that this is one of our thematic issues outlined in our strategy with passion for the church and the world, a level of strategy 2019 to 2024. I applaud our youth who have taken leadership in many ways. Perhaps the concept of planting of Luther Garden in Wittenberg should not just die out as an event that marked the 500th commemoration of the Reformation, but be a signpost to remind and inspire ongoing Reformation, including listening to the groaning of creation. And the groaning of creation is also the groaning of the incarnate Christ, the shepherd, the one who leads the way so we can journey with hope and courage. Our confidence as stewards of the global communion of churches. As LWF Council, we are responsible for the governance, but not the management of the communion. And that often presents some tensions that we need to overcome. This body, the council, is responsible for setting policy directions that are implemented by the management of the communion office. As I understand, the most important purpose of the council is interpreting the resolutions and actions of the assembly and providing sense of direction for the communion's faithful response 
to God's call in our changing world. Looking back since our elections in election in 2017, I am deeply and very pleased about our collaborative spirit and commitment concerning our growth as a communion of churches and our witness in the world. I'm particularly grateful that we have even developed the capacity to work between meetings using electronic and other media. This requires tremendous commitment for which I'm most grateful. During this council meeting, we are going to address some rather complex issues, including questions around the location of the communion office, the financial sustainability of communion, and the restructuring of the communion office. Because we know God's voice, precisely because we know God's voice, we can venture into the unknown, and we can make very difficult decisions. It is God who gives us the grace to discern what God's voice among the countless voices we encounter today means. Those voices incite fear, anxiety, hate, and hopelessness, and many others. When confronted by something that seems fearful or strange, like sheep, we too can become disoriented or fearful. We are afraid to do something that is not politically correct. Yet, we can walk by faith, trusting the Good Shepherd for leadership, guidance, and protection to be empowered to serve as alternatives in a fragile and broken world. While engaging in such difficult debates, I urge us to draw on the spirituality that guides our leadership and focus, focuses and focuses it on the goals we share as a communion of churches. We are stewards of the resources availed for the communion and its work in the world. I do hope also that we are mutually enriched through moments of devotion and prayer, especially our times of ecumenical worship. Closing words. Sisters and brothers, again, we give thanks to God who has made it possible for us to convene as a council. Still today, the true shepherd calls us out, and by his grace, through faith, we know God's voice. This same voice that calls and liberates us from sin and death also calls us to the slums, to the wounded, to the marginalized, and so many depressed and hopeless neighbors. I pray that God grants us commensurate grace to carry out the responsibilities entrusted to us with diligence and integrity. I'm very grateful once again for your commitment and service, and I'm looking forward to your contributions during our time here and in the subsequent years of our tenure as LWF Council. May Christ, the crucified and resurrected, our good shepherd, guide us in our deliberations and fellowship as we work to enrich and nourish the communion to the glory of the triumph God. Amen. I thank you for listening. Thank you very much, dear Archbishop for your guidance, your confidence and trust. So now let's take the chance and talk with the Archbishop from sheep to sheep.